All right, guys, Baz here, Bell the Faber. Are you ready for another chapter? Let's go. Come on, boys. Morning. Right, Jay. You're going on a course today. Who's on, who's on that course? You go with Reese and Alistair. What? Yeah. What? <laughs> hey, have you heard this? Right, listen, it's, it's, a, it's, it's a three day course, yeah? So we've all got to do it, but today's your day to start. All right, so we first aid, grinding wheels and something else. Oh, that anyway, that it's at Monk's training route corner, eight o'clock. All right, Cal? Today, I need you to finish that off. Yeah. Right? So this is like a little bit of a security door frame that we're doing round at Swarf House, which is round at our plant yard. That needs a door fabricating in it, yet with hinges on and a lock. Uh, we are going to Swarf House after, so I could show you where that's going. But other than that, yeah, I need you to get this done. Right, this is a cradle for a breaker that's going to fit on a 30 ton machine, yeah? So, the centres of them plates, or should I say the inside measurements of these plates, yeah? Are 420, so, 420, right? And when I get the pins, I'll get some pins today, some 100 mil pins. I want the pins to come through, right? So if that's a pin coming through, then we're going to sit a little boss over the pin, right? Yeah. Like that. But that boss will also have um, like a little taper on it there because I want the pins welding in. I want the pins fully welding in. And then you'll slide like a little collar over the pin with a little bit tapered out, machined out, that'll slide over the weld. Right? And then that stops the pin from cracking. Are you with me? So when them welds, when you, when you see welds crack on buckets, that's why they crack, because they don't have that little collar over them. Right, so here's that 30 ton dig that uh, we got a bit of footage of yesterday, yeah? When the director wasn't in. Right, Louis, what have we got any of that? It's a 30 ton digging bucket with a lot of issues. 30 ton dig, yeah? Yeah, so we've got a cracking blade, all the floors been patched in, top blade, you can hear it. It's What's happened there then? So they've cut it out so they can fit a quick itching, but they've only put a really thin plate in there. Right, so if you look into it now, yeah, this this original part of the bucket has been cut out, right? It, it would have probably just gone to a dip of this, yeah? Connected to the machine itself, but it's obviously been connected, had a bit cut out of it so we can put a quick itch in it. Right? Oh, it's a B&W bucket. Yeah. Uh, so it's B&W plant, so it's another company within the group uh, that we're doing a book repair for now. So tell us what you're going to do with it, buddy. So I'm going to cut this, cut the blade off, cut the floor out, probably take it, take it back just past these holes so we can get rid of the damaged bit. We're going to put new sides on it, noses, and yeah. all, all new adapters, change that top plate, and repair that crack. Place uh, all these sides. Yeah. Try and get this dint out of here as well, get a bit of that out. Oh, yes. it's quite it's quite 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 quite. See, it's not like that, you know. We don't really want to be replacing the side. But it's probably still quite. When you're doing a quality repair on it, it's a shame not to, isn't it? It is, yeah. Well, how far do you go with it? Yeah, no, you don't want to put too much money into it. So we'll change the edge, change all the adapters. Put a new floor in it. We'll cut all this back out here and set a 20 mil plate in that. Eh? 20, yeah. minimum 15 it. anyway. Probably about six mil plate, isn't it? It's either six or eight mil. Yeah, yeah. It yeah. sounds very tinny compared to the rest of it. Yeah. But Woody's uh, he's probably one of our most experienced bucket builders, yeah. So have a look at this welding later on. Right, I'll leave you to it. Sound. So this is another bucket that we've got going through the workshop at the moment. This is a 20 ton ditching bucket. And if you look here now, this is about to have a new bolt on edge on it, yeah? It's had a new floor welded in it. But look how much material you've got there. 
there and there. So there's a 330 mil bolt on edge going on here now. So I halve that 165, yeah. So from there, 165 mil out is where the new edge is going to go to, yeah. So look at how much leverage you've got from there to where the new edge is going to be. What happens with these buckets, yeah, when they put new edge on, they get worn like this, it breaks this edge off. So it'll break there, it'll break there, it'll break there, and it'll break there, and it'll rip that edge off. So what we do to stop that is weld a piece of edge on the side, just to stiffen it up. As you can see, that's an old Dozer blade edge, that of a Komatsu D61. We don't have any more of them dozers no more, so we're just using the old edges up. Just another job running through the workshop today. So Woody, where are we up to with this? Uh, just got to pull the blade off, trim a bit more off this, the angle's not quite right. And uh, get the floor in. Get the floor in. Yeah. So that's the blade there. That's an HB 500 blade edge. And then he's going to put the adapters on, which are over here. Teeth, Futura, where technology, I'd say they're the best teeth on the market. And then he'll put the floor in, a 12 mil floor that's rolled to that. And then we'll put a set of wear strips on it. So depending on what time he gets that floor today, hopefully early, it won't be far off done today, this bucket. That bucket over there, that's the one that we picked up in the last chapter from Bake Up, yeah? So that's ready now to go back to work. Oh, Paul. So this is Paul, he's been with me seven, seven years now, you lad. Is it seven years? Seven and a half years. Seven and a half seven years. Seven and a half years. Huh? <laughs> Let's just have a take a look at this job that you're on with today, yeah? So what Paul's doing is he's going to put a swing lift in the uh, back of a van for lifting uh, wheels out of truck wheels. So tell us what you're doing with this, Paul. Ah. So basically, you want the swing lift for these tyres. Well, so you're going to take that bolt out there, see that bolt? So that's a good fixing point, that in the floor, yeah? Trim that piece of wood away there, if I can get to it. And have a look underneath, if we could put another couple of fixing points yeah. in that plate. I'm going to put a strip of material, probably about 5mm max, uh, 900 down, be 180 across. So the lift swings round here. And it's on it got a motor on the top for the winch to lift the wheels in and out, yeah. Right, so yeah, put a couple of stiffeners in here, a couple of gussets in here. Just fix back to the side of the van, and that'll be plenty. So this is the breaker that we're gonna make a cradle for, yeah. Now then we're putting that on a 35 ton excavator now, so we're putting it on a ZX 350. It was on a ZX 300 which had a different cradle on it, which is there. So this cradle won't fit the 350, yeah? For starters, it's on 90mm pins and it'll be at different centres, right? And can you, when I will mention talking then about putting the collars over the end of the pins, this cracked a couple of times, yeah? It's been welded a few times. It's a bad design, this. I don't know who's made this cradle. I don't like this setup here. I don't like this at all. Right. So the one that I've designed will come down and then go in. Yeah, it'll come down and go in so you won't have that there. As you will see when we make it. So if you look at this drawing, if we're at the cradle, it'll we'll go like that. And it'll go like that. And that'll be your plate there. That'll be your bolt holes there and bolt holes. Yeah, bolt holes, then your pins will go through there. So this will be a welded joint, welded joint, fully welded, fully welded, fully weld, fully weld, solid. Never crack ever. 
and that is actually the cradle off a 35 ton excavator but the whole centres won't fit that breaker so that won't do but that is for a 35 ton machine as you can see it's much bigger <laughs> fuck it <laughs> fuck it uh, Cal makes me laugh <laughs> right right we're all good now we're going to go out and inspect a crusher up at Jackson's yeah how are you doing bud how are you fella a couple of lads for today graders if you how you from have you mm. What are you careful of? I've got some lighting lads, yeah. electric, so I've seen them lights that are off up there. And then uh, curbing, fencing, anything you want. Fence. Mm. Fence at railhead. Yeah. I'll tell you what, we'll go to railhead and we'll go through this fence job, yeah? Right, so this is our plant yard behind me, eh? And this is the entrance to our railhead. And this is Roy the boy. Roy Underwood, yeah? He's our operations manager. Good lad. Right, bud. right so, have you got some lads for here? Yeah? yeah. So, I need a fence putting up here. Yeah. These gates here, I fitted these gates a few weeks ago, right? And I need a fence. I need a fence going up this embankment here, going back to the wall to make this yard secure. So, you're the man, you tell me what we need. I've got some posts, yeah. and I'm, I want some palisade fencing putting up, but I need somebody to put the posts in the ground. Yeah, I think the best way to do this, Baz, is get a 13 tonner or something with rubber tracks. Let's get him over this footpath, pull a ramp down and everything to get access. Obviously, I'll get lads, give it a CAT scan. I've got a drawing saying there's nothing in here, but we'll CAT scan it again anyway. We'll get a ramp up, and they'll just clear all your veg, We'll work from backside, put him close in, and then when we finish, we'll just tidy it all back. It'll grow over again in no time, so right, we'll do Sam. that, not be a problem. Oh. Now, that's the good thing about having a civils company within the group, yeah? We've got lads that can do this kind of work. Right, Sam, there's the post. Yeah, that's right. Right, I'll just have to... If we set them at, like, I don't know, what do you say, three-metre sensors? Yeah, three metres, whatever's comfortable for you fabricating your post. Yeah, I don't mind. I don't, the panels that I'm going to fabric, I, it doesn't matter you to me. Do whatever we'll do it, I'd say, every three metres. Alright. Yeah? Yeah, no problem. Just work out that we've got enough pour, so. Yeah, I can get some more order if need be. Yeah. Great, sound, sound. We'll get up to Jackson's.
We're just pulling up to Jackson's yard now. We'll go sign in. And we've got a crusher on here, a J45 crusher that's ready for an inspection. And we've also got a peel grab that we need to have a look at that needs a lot of work doing to it. I'll go sign in. Right, so we're signed in now. We'll go and find the crusher on here somewhere. Unfortunately, we won't be able to take the drone up because of the bad weather. And we're about to get wet, very wet. And so are you, director. So you better have your wet gear with you, boy. A little bit of rain don't stop us getting out and about. So if you look to the left there now we've got a wash plant, CDE wash plant, all over a million pound right there. If you look round here now, this is all the material that goes through the crusher. And some material goes through the wash plant and there's our crusher. A Klusky G45. Ready to inspect. Right, so we've got a G45 crusher here. It's just on its first 300 hours. I'm going to give it a quick inspection and I'll tell you the things to look out for with one of these. The main things really is the fixed jaw coming loose. Right. So I'll show you where to check that. See them four nuts there? You've got four nuts on the opposite side. And that is the locking mechanism for the fixed jaw. It works on a wedge system where you pull you pull two wedges in and it locks the jaw in. And what happens over time, it comes loose and it wears the wedges and that jaw will pop out. So check, always check them nuts every week, weekly checks. Yeah. The other thing to check, the toggle rams. You've got two toggle rams there. These two toggle rams, they seize up and the rods lock in the cylinder, yeah? One way of stopping that happening is to open the claw, open and close the jaws daily. Yeah? These are your rams that open and close the jaw. The other thing to look out for is turns in the belt. Look for rips in the belt and check the pre-screen isn't blocked so this crusher itself it's got a feeder and a pre-screen separate right so yeah it's a dual one so that's your feeder and that's your pre-screen and what happens on the pre-screen You've got a shoot here, so it'll have a mesh in the pre-screen and everything that comes through that mesh, through the screen, comes off the side belt, yeah? So if you're wanting like MOT material coming off, you'll put like, say, a 45mm mesh under the pre-screen and that's what'll come off there. Everything else will run through the jaw or behind the jaw. So you've got a separate shoot here. This shoot here is at the front of the pre-screen. And what happens, it's another thing we need to check now, that blocks, that blocks a lot sometimes on the pre-screen, so we'll just check that. What we'll do, we'll go down the other side, switch the machine off, 
check all these things over. Right, so the machine's done 300 hours, 307 hours, and 254 hours crushing time, yeah? This lever here. Open and closes the jaw. Hear it? It's very slow how it does it, so you have to stand there for a minute or two and close the jaw, yeah? This runs the belt. And then we've got the mag belt. Check them for tours. And then this fires the jaw. So now the crush is going to start. So now I know the jaws running all right, there's no banging, turn the machine off and now I'm going to climb on the machine and check the jaw, we'll go around the other side to do that though, it's easier, yeah and I'll show you the pre-screen, any movement in these nuts and it's loose, you see that? So the jaw is, at the moment is actually loose, so I'll just back these first couple of nuts off. So this one at the back here, see how that's loose? Look at that. But really, you've got, you really have to treat these like wagon wheel nuts, yeah? Basically keep them taut. That'll be tight enough, but we've got three turns on that. So if you can imagine that jaw moving about on the little lock wedges, it doesn't take long for them to wear it out. And before we know it, that jaw will be popping out. And you see how much we've got there just in that. Right, so we're now in the hopper of the crusher. This is the feeder. This part's the feeder. This part's the pre-screen, yeah? Most crushers have these where they're all in one, where this runs on separate boxes. So that'll run separately to this one, yeah? Underneath this pre-screen here, you can't actually see it through here on this. There's usually a mesh. But you don't really need a mesh because of the gaps here. You see how you've only got a 40mm gap? So your material that runs through there runs onto the side belt and comes off the other side. Right? And at the front of the pre-screen you have another little chute here that I just mentioned before and that runs down be behind the jaw so you're getting finer materials running down behind the jaw whereas everything else runs through the jaw. Now then, these 45s will crush down to 50 mil. You get about 50 mil, 50 to 60 mil coming off the belt, minimum. This is your magic eye. So you can you can control the speed of your feeder. You can also control how much goes in the jaw before it stops the feeder from feeding it into the jaw. 
Yeah, so once the jaw gets to a certain level, once the material gets to a certain level within the jaw, this feeder will stop and let the, let the jaw clear itself before it put, puts more material in. Good crusher. So that crush is all good to go. We have another job to look at on here. A peel grab that needs to come in for a full refurb. This is Jackson's transfer station. Where they do a lot of recycling. And that is the machine there that we want to look at. Looks like it's got an issue. Just wait for Dave to come down who uh, runs this site and I'll go through the job with him then. So this is Dave Scott, yeah, he's the operations manager at Jackson's. What have we got here, Dave? What's up with it? Right, this is our orange peel grab that we use here in the waste transfer station. It uh, basically is well and truly worn out, ready for an overhaul, and just the job stinks of uh, welder fabber. <laughs> Lift it up, bud. Let's just have a look at it. Have you had a price on a new one, Dave? Uh, we have, yeah, it's not a price that we're willing to pay at the moment. Right. So uh, we're looking to see what we can do. Oh, like that. Does all, the, does all the rams need resealing? All the rams will need resealing. The, uh, the rotation seal's gone in the rotating motor. It's probably been abused and picked up some items that are too heavy and just stretched it. Uh, so we've got some new tips for it. We've got the tips in stock, we've ordered those in, and it's obviously we're looking at dropping it into you, hopefully Monday next week, and looking at how long will it I'll tell you what, Dave, it might be, cheap, it might be cheaper, you know, to buy, buy a second hand one. If anyone's got one. And I'll tell you what, if anybody's watching right now who's got one of these for sale, Kinsoffer, yeah, come at me, because it might be cheaper to buy a second hand one than repair this. Open it up, bud. Oh. Yeah, that's well and truly worn out. So all new pins and bushes, new tips, all rams to be resealed. Rotator probably want resealing as well. Yeah, you're talking big money here. You're talking about five, six days work here, Dave. And that's uh, that's if we can get pins and bushes made. Because we're not going to buy more kids off it, there'll be a fortune. Are you all right with you down for a week? Yeah? yeah. yeah if I can't find a second down one, yeah, we'll attack it next week. Right. Yeah. You happy with that? Yeah, sound. Yeah. Cheers, mate. Now that there, should be behind there, yeah, like that. So that will have popped out of there because of all this play. It's going to be a big job, big job. Nice job.
Oh. Right, so we'll just back to your now, we'll see what it adds up to, yeah? Two, John. All right. Yeah, I've done me. I've just been DLC, done gas, been to Express, get some welding stuff. Uh, mm. This has just been in for MLT and come back, so I'm just cracking on with this uh, lifting frame. The past test, all right. Yeah, sound no problem. So I've got one plate in there ready to go. Yeah. Uh, I'm just marking out where I'm going to drill the locations for this. So. Right, sound. That's cut ready to go. Did that have a bolt straight through it? That nut and bolt? Yeah, it did, Was yeah. It? So yeah. I already have a lifting eye on it. Lifting eye there. So that should line up right above the bolt hole there. Right, so I'm making a couple more in it, yeah? Yeah. Get some Have you cut some stiffeners? Yeah, I've got some stiffeners cut ready. Just need to adjust the... Right. What is on bit for? Uh, just putting a taper on this floor because the back of the bucket is not as wide as the front, so I've got to put an angle on it. So it's a tapered bucket this year, we've got a 12mm bottom here going in it. What's the roll like? Do we know yet or not? Uh, I'm not too sure yet. <laughs> so, it's not, all right. so the template's not come back with it, is it not? No, it's not, no. If the template's not come back with it, it usually means it's not quite right. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. So we'll see where you, where you hang it in. <laughs> so you can see how it's got the uh, edge on here now. And the adapter's on. That's just a bit of a mock-up that till we get the floor in. start putting this together yeah but I've got to sort some more jobs out so I've got to go make a lot of phone calls right so tomorrow I'm going to take the tea I'm going to take the tea can from this trailer. I'm going to go down to Southampton and recover a 13 ton excavator. But I think it's going to be a bit of a mission. I'm going to set off at 3 o'clock in the morning. I'm going to try and get to Southampton for, what is it, five hours? Five and a half hours. If I get there for nine o'clock there, um, if you can meet me on site, or do you want, to meet, do you want me to meet you at BW's yard? So what the plan is, yeah, Keith's going to pick a machine up from BW Plant's yard in Southampton. We'll use that machine to pull the dead machine onto the back of this trailer, also using the winch. Um, so I'm just trying to make a plan now what time we're going to meet. I'll be, at, I'll be at their yard for seven. I'll have the machine on by time. Right, well, you get the machine on. You, I'll send you the postcode for the job. I'll meet you at the job, yeah? No but apparently, the machine is like 200 metres in, away from the road. So we're going to have to pull it back with the, with the machine, yeah? That, apparently, that winch is about 250 metres long, I think. Is it? Uh, yeah. Well, we can pull it so far with your machine, then pull the rest of it with a winch. Depending on how close you can get the truck. Well, we're taking the T-cab, yeah, which is the flagship truck, and we're taking the van, which is the flagship van. 
Yeah, I'll be your morning key. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Down. <coughs> Down. Right, Cal, they're pushing for this now, so it's just been on to me, yeah? So, but you can't put that together without the pins, right? So I'll go and get the pins now. Um, it's 420 to the inside, so I'll do it like 423 actually, because a quick hitch is about 410 mil, yeah? Right, we'll go and get the, uh, the pins from my little pal. Right, so we're on the way to Bolton now, Loco Works. Used to be the local works where they used to make trains, but um, we're gonna. It's called AJS Engineering, little Arvin, yeah. My Indian father, I call him. Absolute little diamond he is. This guy can make anything. I mean, machine anything. Even Curtis at Cutting Edge Engineering would be impressed with this guy. I know he's only making a couple of bucket pins here for his now, but you want to see what he has made for me in the past, yeah many many more things like that so i'll introduce you when we get there so this is the old local works at bolton what's left of it anyway just building houses all around it now this is like a needle in a haystack i'm telling you now finding this little gaff this guy is legendary to me anyway They've even cut his power off, yeah? So he's got a generator to run his workshop. Here we are. <laughs> Look at me getting out of the way in camera. <laughs> Right, so now we're here, yeah? Arvins, AJS Engineering. Where is my little fella? Where is he? These are for us. In fact, it's these ones here. And these. So these are for the breaker cradle, yeah? And these will slide over the pin. Right, and can you see how I'll put that little See, I'll put that little chamfer in there. So that'll be the ear of the cradle there, which will be welded. And then the weld will go in that, put that over, weld that to the pin, and then weld that to the plate. And that stops your bucket pins from cracking where they're welded. Where are you? There's he is, little fella. How are you doing? Now, my boy, ah. this man can make oh, no. anything, and I mean anything. <laughs> right, know, let's man. talk about something here now, yeah? Mm. Whose work comes first? Mine or Robbie Hunter's? Yours, because you pick big from. Robbie, mine. <laughs> Hunter's pop well. You'll be, <laughs> <a, laughs> be slagging at me. <laughs> Look at this new machine here. <laughs> Look at that bad boy. I'll give have you been, another con. Have you been splashing out a lot? Yes. What kind of money is one of these? Uh, short on five figures. Uh, three, three, six. Yeah? It's not too much till you, boy. Must be paying too much money. It's one of those things having to. Yeah? Make so what's that doing there now then? Just making a simple job at the moment, drilling, tapping, making tea nuts. Tea nuts? Have you got one there to look at? Let's have a look. It's not exactly the same. Ah, there it is. So we're just making some little tea nuts here. Right, I need to give you an order number don't I, for this job, yeah? Because I've got to get going. Yeah. All right, bud.
this is what I'm talking about, yeah? Break a cradle. So we've got a good prep there. We've got a good prep there. We've got a prep on the inside here. On all four. We're also going to put a stiffener here and continue it through on the inside. Yeah? So on the inside it'll come up to here and go right across. On this side. In case you I was talking earlier about the collars that I've had made. Once that's fully welded there, we've got a little prep here and that'll slide over. Over the weld and that'll be fully welded. And fully welded there. And what that actually does it stops that weld from cracking yeah so a lot of cradles won't have that on and buckets with ears on ears on buckets they don't have a collar on like that yeah and they crack there around there so by putting that on you're doubling it up on the welding and it'll never crack so i can we'll weld that up now and that's it for this chapter I'm off to Southampton early doors in the morning on a major recovery job, and I mean a major recovery. I'm going to take the DJI camera because the director is going to be editing what we've done so far. And I'll see you on the next chapter. Check out here for one of my other episodes. Check out here for the last one. Cheers.